to the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low the high tree, lift high the lowly tree, wither up the green tree, and make the withered tree bloom. As I, the Lord, have spoken, so will I do. The word Brothers and sisters, we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. But we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please Him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land and would sleep and rise night and day, and through it all the seed would sprout and grow. He knows not how. Of its own accord, the land yields fruit. First the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. When the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. And he said, To what shall we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed that, when it is sown in the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it without parables. He did not speak to them, but to his own disciples. Good morning, everyone. A small man, not much over five feet tall, applied for a job as a lumberjack in Alaska. The foreman, wanting to discourage him, gave him a large axe set before a tree hundreds of feet tall, many yards in diameter, and told him to chop it down. Within minutes, the tree had been felled. The amazed foreman asked him where he learned to chop trees so powerfully. And the little fellow replied, when I worked in the Sahara forest. <laughs> and the foreman replied, you mean the Sahara Desert? Well, he said, you see, it was a forest before I got there. <laughs> I remember my first day at Holy Infant Parish. It's an easy date to remember, April Fool's Day, 2004. <laughs> I was eager to be here. I wanted to be a pastor. I also thought that this would be a nice, small, sleepy parish with not much to do. And you proved me wrong time and time again. Now we aren't the largest parish in the Diocese of Harrisburg, but we have done a lot together. We've done great things together. We began as a community of 60 people in Saginaw in 1923. Then we moved here in 1949 and eventually became a full-fledged parish in 1972. Now we are ready to move again. Because God has made the parable of the mustard seed come alive for us, even the smallest of seeds can grow into a great plant when we allow God to work through us. If you look at our history, we started small and we're continuing to grow. Even with two jobs, the other one being in the tribunal, my heart was always here in the parish. I love being your pastor. Not that I mind being in tribunal work, I like that too. In many ways, I've had the best of both worlds for 11 years. After I came here on April 1st, 2004, 
My main goal was to get to know the people of the parish. Because in my mind, it's always been our parish. It's not my parish or your parish. It's our parish. And I will take the memories of a lifetime with me to Greensburg from our parish. We laugh together, cry together, and most importantly, we worship God together. The most important thing we do in our lives. My memories will be of times of loss, and times of gain, times of death, and times of birth, funerals, and baptisms celebrated right here. I will remember wondering whether God would hear my prayer for your healing when I anointed so many of you before surgery. Whether our first communion kids would have a great celebration as they receive Jesus for the first time at uh, the Eucharist, the First Holy Communion whether I would see our confirmation class return to church after their confirmation. Thankfully, with a few exceptions, they did come back thanks to you good parents. I will remember sending our high school graduates off to college or to a military academy or into the workforce and worrying for them just like their parents did. That's why you call me father, I suppose. I worry too. My memories will be of celebrating great liturgies with you, the ordinations of Paul Shank and Anthony Dill, great masses, Christmas and Holy Week and Easter. I will remember picnics, sometimes right out here on the lawn, and outdoor movie nights and Advent socials and sweetheart dances and mother-daughter breakfasts and so much more. I will remember our friendships, our struggles, and even our disagreements. We have been a family with the normal things that happen day to day in any family. And the family will continue to thrive here even when one of its members moves away. I will remember Deacon Joe's singing of the Alleluia at the close of the Easter Mass. <laughs> <laughs> I will remember calling, I will remember people calling the parish, me answering the phone, the person asking for Becky, Becky taking the call, and then saying loud enough for me to hear, yes, I'll tell Father that. <laughs> I will remember Teresa Mahoney saying, oops, the choir ball. <laughs> Whenever she made a musical mistake, God rest her soul. And I will remember one of our kids, who will remain unnamed, saying during the living stations of the cross that the women of Jerusalem laminated Jesus. <laughs> Of course, we're going to say lamented Jesus. <laughs> it's only that you just can't get out of here. And, and my own mistakes, there are many. The most recent one, a few weeks ago, when I read the wrong gospel and only realized that halfway through, and Jerry Zurich wondered aloud for everyone to hear what Deacon Joe would say if he were at that time. Probably Deacon Joe would say, gotcha, Father. We've had fun together. We have never laughed at each other, but with each other. And that's a good thing. Family should do that. I will forget the details of stories that you might remember vividly years from now. And I know that I might eventually forget names and maybe even some faces. That's the nature of the mind and aging. But I will never forget the feelings and the closeness, the presence of God among us, and our love for each other. We've grown together, not unlike the branches of a living plant, like the one in the gospel. Again, only by God's grace, and I open this to it. I can't wait to come back and see what God does through you in the next year as you build a church at Parish Center. The seeds of that project were planted well before I arrived, and it will be completed after I'm gone. 
Some projects just take a long time, but they're worth it. More importantly than the building is the people who will use it because you are the members of the kingdom of God. You are the ones that he has planted here in this part of his earth and watered you, caused you to grow regarding the building itself. I could feel like Moses who was not allowed to cross the Jordan River into the Promised Land after leading his people for so long. To come to the edge and not be allowed to cross can be frustrating. I'll tell that to Pope Francis when I see him. <laughs> Luckily, he doesn't speak English. <laughs> but the truth is, I will come back, and I hope to be the one to dedicate that new church sometime in 2016. At least that's the plan. No. But sometimes plans change. <laughs> Pray that that one doesn't. And I also hope that when I come back, I will find an even stronger family of faith. Keep on growing. Keep on growing. Be good to your new pastor. Just as you've been good to me. That's a commandment. <laughs> Be patient with him. Just like you were patient with me. And remember, Father Rice has more experience as a pastor than I did when I came here. He knows what he's doing. So trust him and trust God. In the first reading, God takes a piece from a tree and transplants it somewhere else. The tree remains behind, but the transplanted shoot takes what it received from the tree and grows it in another place. That's an apt image. Think of our parish as the tree. We've grown together, watered by the sacraments, nourished by God's Word. But now God is transplanting me somewhere else. I will take a piece of you with me when I go. I will take what I have received here and let it go somewhere else. In my case, that's a place called Greensburg. There will now be a part of Holy in the parish in Greensburg. I remember one of my vocation directors when I was a seminarian who would often use the phrase, bloom where you are planted. I guess that's something that we all must do. We must all be who we were meant to be. We must all be Christian. And we must be that wherever we are, wherever we go. Because life does change. And we never know where we're going to find ourselves from one day to the next. Because each day brings new experiences, new challenges, and new blessings. But we're still followers of Jesus. And even though we change, God is the constant in our lives. God constantly loves us. And it's His constant love that causes us to change. He makes us grow and mature and move upwards to Him. Like a seed that sprouts and works its way through the soil and moves towards the sunlight as it grows to maturity. That's who we are as we move through this life. God waters us, causes us to grow. As long as we're open to that, as long as we're open to it, we can become even better. Even if it means that one of us is transported and transplanted and the others remain firmly rooted in the original soil. Please know that I need you loving you, each and every one of you. And I know that I have your love too. I felt that so much in these last few weeks and it's amazing. For your love, I am very, very grateful. Now I guess I have to ask one last question. Uh -huh. Are you standing in the light of God's love and letting Him transform you each and every day into a better Christian, even if it's in a way that takes some time to notice? And let me answer this one for myself. 
I know that God has blessed me greatly with 11 years as your pastor. And I have grown as a Christian and as a priest by the grace of God that I have found here with you. Amen. salvation, 
Good afternoon, everyone. Peace be with you. What a glorious day this is, a gr glorious day of celebration. With a little sadness, but oh, God is alive and well in Holy Infant Parish. Shall we begin with the sign of our salvation as we always do? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you for yet another day in our lives to give you honor, praise, glory, and service. We ask you look to look kindly on Father Ed on this his special day as he prepares to leave our wonderful family of Holy Infant. We ask you to bless him with your choicest blessings, a long life, good health, much love and support in the Diocese of Greensburg, peace, joy, and continue to let him hold on to his sense of humor. He's gonna need it. <laughs> we ask you to bless the food we are about to eat, the hands that have prepared it, and last but not least, this wonderful family of God, the saints of yours, Lord, who I've grown to love, and I know Father Red has too. Bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts which we are about to receive from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bon appetit. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
about the selection that they have here. Pretty is this good. awesome or what? Good. Occasionally he stepped down to visit the workers. So on Saturday he stopped in and they were short-handed. He asked how things were going and and Teresa told him that they needed some help. All right, and that he could learn how to dip. Uh, he kind of chuckled and declined because uh, she said that he could, she could find for him a hair neck. Other than said he had to go write his sermon and left. Now he did return later and he did help, so I just let you know. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Mrs. Fig, or Arlette, and she represents some of the ex-Lutherans, or way we like to call them, the Holy Converts. Okay, so here she is.
was it about four years ago? You had uh, CJ run around the altar? Yeah. This is payback. <laughs> I'll go easy since you're a bishop now. Um, five years ago, Father Ed was brave enough to hire me as the youth minister here at Holy Infant. And uh, I've actually known him much longer than that. Uh, I had the pleasure of first meeting Father Ed in 1987. He was assigned to St. Teresa's Parish. He was a freshly young ordained priest. He was known as the cool priest. <laughs> While I was in the second grade, I chose Father Ed to hear my first confession. This decision was solely based on his coolness, not so much his faithfulness. <laughs> I'm telling you, he was really cool. <laughs> I knew he could handle the sins of my seven-year-old self at that time, and um, I still actually have a drawing of this time in my life um, that I commemorated in my second grade religion book. So I make copies of this. <laughs> I'll, I'll pass them around here. I showed this to him a few years ago, actually. Now pay no attention because my... Um, my education in theology has gotten better, um, and so is my spelling. But if you look at the picture, um, there is Father Ed, lacking hair, and uh, saying the body of Christ. Uh, it's the body of Christ, but um, that's the way I think I'm going to always remember you, Father Ed. <laughs> While he was at St. Teresa's, Father Ed had a pet. Now, we all know it was not a cat. <laughs> it was a little goldfish, and when it came time for Father Ed to leave St. Teresa's and to transfer to his new assignment, he entrusted me with that fish. I named that fish Fred, in honor of Father Ed. Get it? Fred. <laughs> Fred was my very first pet, and I loved him with all my heart, and I cried the day he died. Fast forward to 2004, I was overjoyed to hear that Father Ed would be joining us here at Holy Infant. Even after 15 years, Father Ed maintained his coolness, but he didn't maintain his hairline. <laughs> he, also he also continued to share his love of goldfish. As we all know, for several years, Father Ed would put goldfish in the Easter fountain. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Spare. <laughs> so in honor of you and all the goldfish, I'm presenting you with this gift of goldfish. This little fish is also a bishop, with, complete with a mitre. <laughs> over to dinner one night and we had a real nice evening and shared a lot of good stories and Father Ed was about to leave and something very unexpected happened. Well, we all know what an animal lover Father Ed is. <laughs> Did you see him cringe when he thought there was a real goldfish in that town? <laughs> but in any event, what you don't know is St. Francis of Assisi has nothing on Father Ed. My wife said when, when he was getting ready to leave our dinner, my wife had a, a, a nice wreath on her front door. Well, a couple birds while he was there must have nested in it. And so he goes to open the door to leave and two birds fly in the house. Now, I saw the look in his eyes. He said to himself, should I bolt or should I give him a hand? But, but he decided to, to be a good sport, so he shut the door. We have my son's dog, which is part bird dog. It's flying. One bird flew upstairs. One bird flew into our family room. So we are all just running around the house like crazy trying to get rid of these birds. We finally cornered one out the patio door, and we went upstairs and cornered one in the bathroom, took the screen out, and Father Ed helped us to shoot out the window. So, so we're going to present you with a couple birds here, Father. Uh, 
You love to travel so much. So, Maxine, can you pass it forward? Um, he's went to, since he's been here, you've been to Norway, um, Italy, Israel, uh, numerous places. So we created a passport that has all the places you've ministered to in the diocese. So every place, including campus ministry and things. But, you know, one thing I learned, when he's away on these vacations, and many, many vacations, <laughs> I don't know if you even know this, but on my iPhone, I would, I would put the place that he's at and so I can record the weather or watch what the weather is going to be in those locations. So on my phone, I have Halifax, Paris, <laughs> and met numerous places. So I always know the weather <laughs> in those places that you have you visited. So Father, here you go to uh, just commemorate your, all your travels. Father Ed, right? Grace and Noah are here to represent some of the kids that go on the youth trips with, to Hershey Park that the church so generously provides for any of the kids who volunteer as servers or in the choir or whatever capacity. And I had asked some of the other kids if they had anything to share, and they said, well, we asked him to go on rides, but lots of times he said no. No, thank you. Keep, go ahead, have fun. But I did have one person say, it was Mary Angela, and she said, I asked him to go on the roller coaster, and he said, I like roller coasters, I'll go with you. And she said they stood in the very long line, and he was telling her about growing up and how things that he did. And she said, and he kept mentioning, and I used this thing, and she said, I think he said rotary phone. And she said, I didn't know what he meant. <laughs> so, but Hershey Park trips, always thinking about who's corralling the kids, what's the weather going to be like, are they all going to stay safe, and all the prayers that you sent to them. And we certainly appreciate it. They've enjoyed the times. We hope they continue to go. Mine are still young and are looking forward to it. We wanted to present you with a Hershey Kiss candle and a Hershey Kiss filled with smaller kisses. Thank you very much, Father, for taking care of the youth of the parish. And, and anybody from Western Pennsylvania, I am from Western Pennsylvania, and Father, uh, everybody knows what a gum band is, right? And Ewan's. Yeah. And all the, uh, uh, what's the, uh, oh, oh, oh. pop, you have to oh, learn uh, any yeah. soda anymore, uh, that's out. And, uh, exposed to, uh, all these different things. Maybe a sandwich, that says make me a sandwich. Um, now we're right up the house. And a lot of these things go into play with, of course, uh, the uh, Pennsylvania Dutch too, but I think it's a Polish, uh, uh, ancestry that's down there. So he can't use those anymore. Also, an unknown fact that some people don't know is Father likes to go car shopping on Sundays. <laughs> um, uh, of course, nobody's in the dealers. So, he, so he, you, Father, you have now 35 new dealers in that area. Yeah. Take out to say. So, so you've got at least a, uh, almost a year's worth of, uh, of, of browsing on there. Uh, the let, let the trove is there. And who knows? What the trove is known for? Anybody? Steelers. First of all, it's the Steelers, not the Steelers out there. So you got to know what the how, how to pronounce it. But also, there's also another gentleman out there that's known for the trove. Anybody can guess? Otto Palmer. So you, I'm sure, along the travels, will meet Otto Palmer. Uh, he does have a car dealership out there too. <laughs> It's Arnold Palmer's car dealership, so it's actually in the, uh, on the, on the, in the pages. Uh, but Father, uh, when he came to the parish, uh, he said, uh, I started a golf tournament, and I said, hey, Father, come along. So I, uh, he said, fine. He says, I've never played before. Uh, I said, okay, well, then we'll give it, a, give it a shot. So we got, Father was saying mass, we had it at 1 o'clock, so we had to get down there. And Father just pulled into the parking lot right at 1 o'clock. And we all got in our cart. And I said, Father, where are your golf clubs? He says, what do you mean? I, I, I said, well, you don't have any golf clubs. So he, he, uh, we had to find a lot of golf clubs for him. But 
he had a good day. He hit he, he a few. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but also, you know, everybody knows the golf ball is fairly small. You know, it's a golf ball. Uh, he had a tough time with this one. So I figured he would need something a little bit bigger. <laughs> uh, lastly, uh, when the uh, church was being built, uh, it was being built, the groundbreaking uh, Father Ed's father said, that's the first time I've ever seen you with a shovel. <laughs> And then on the website, which everybody might have seen, the father was out there and they put a chainsaw in his hands and everybody in Greensburg thinks he's a, a woodsman. Uh, so, but Father Ed's father has probably never seen him with a golf club in his hand. So Father, go ahead and we'll show you the golf club. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your, keep your left arm straight. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> that being said, this is involving a whipped cream pie from Deacon Joe and his lovely wife. Here we go. He doesn't trust me. <laughs> Father, seven years ago, you probably remember this, our uh, committee for our parish picnic got together and they said one of the things that would be really nice for our youth, for our children, would be, you know, maybe a whipped cream pie throwing contest. <laughs> and he said it would be extra wonderful if they could throw these pies at you. <laughs> So Father thought about it a little bit and he said, you know what, that probably would be fun. So they made this backdrop, you know, with a hole in it, and you've seen those already, and there was like a black suit with a collar on the front, and Father's head was supposed to go in that hole, you know. The day of the picnic come, every, every came, everything was wonderful, the kids were all excited, and like 10 minutes before the pie throwing contest, Father Ed got cold feet. Uh, he said, I can't do that. There's a, uh, a saying in canon law, it's called chickening out. <laughs> <laughs> so me being a deacon, you know, not wanting to disappoint our little children, I said, well, Father, you know what? I'll volunteer. And he went, thanks, Jesus. <laughs> so I volunteered. And I knelt down there behind this screen, and the kids began to throw pies <laughs> for a half hour. <laughs> they started out at 10 feet away, they gradually moved in until they were literally taking these whipped cream pies and shoving it in my mug. <laughs> and he really smelled bad today. It's hot. I, I, I thought this was going on, you know, for hours, and I was told it was only like a half hour. And, you know, when I first volunteered for it, I thought, you know, a lot of deacons have been stoned. And what's the big deal with a, you know, whipped cream pie? So, uh, after, the, after the festivities, all the kids went to be with their moms and dads and loved ones. And I'm left there, and I discovered that at the site where we had our picnic, they had no showers. But I did discover a water pump in field somewhere. So I got down on my hands and knees and started scrubbing my hair and my face and my ears, and it was caked in my ears and on my head and in my mouth and up my nose, and it was even down the back of my neck. It was terrible, and it was a very hot day like today, hot and muggy. And I began walking around, you know, the picnic area. And people would normally come up to me, and they'll stand pretty close to me and say, Hey, hi, Deacon Joe, how you doing? But I noticed, like, people were starting to move back from me. I go, what's with that, you know? And the next thing you know, my wife says to me, Joe, I love you dearly. 
but you really stink. <laughs> See, the sun has an effect on whipped cream like that. It starts to sour and turn bad and go nasty. So I said, okay, and you know, at that stage of the game, so many of you were kind of backing off. Hey, how you doing? Stay over there if you don't mind. I felt like getting a bell and saying, unclean, unclean. <laughs> so lo and behold, eventually I, I run into Father Ed, and Father Ed goes, uh, he goes, what's that smell? And I said, well, it's me. He goes, boy, you smell awful. <laughs> so I wanted Father to experience <laughs> what I did that day. Look how big his eyes are. <laughs> I have here, Father, a whipped cream pie. It's a little one, and there's not much whipped cream. Now, could you move aside, miss? <laughs> but from 2011, 12, 13, 14, and 15, we have made a total of 67,800 eggs. <laughs> We have used 4,500 pounds of 10x sugar, 1,082 pounds of butter, 2,246 pounds of chocolate, and 474 40-ounce jars of peanut butter. But we are looking for more people to sell them. So, Father, since you are going to be in Greensboro, <laughs> We thought maybe you could get us some customers out there. <laughs> All joking aside, Father, it has been wonderful. You're a wonderful shepherd, and we will love you and will always be in our hearts. Sunday of Advent. What is the proper liturgical color? Pink. <laughs> pink. And we know how much you love pink. So we made another pink vestment that you may take to Greensburg. And it's just a beautiful handmade uh, vestment for you to wear and remember us by. So thank you. <laughs> When I first met Father Ed at St. Teresa's, that was like 28 years ago, he was a newly ordained priest, and it was Lent, and he said, Joe, I will never wear a pink vestment, and he hasn't to this day, okay? He hasn't to this day. I said, well, why, Father, why is that? He says, because I look like a 200-pound bottle of pepto business. <laughs> Thank you, Deacon Joe, for underestimating my weight. <laughs> I've got to tell you a story because I've been hearing a whole ton of stories. How many people in here are in the military? And the first thing they tell you is, don't what? Volunteer. So we had a uh, priest here by the name of Father Ochesky. Remember? Do you remember the front of the church? Yeah. Sponge pink. Yeah. Yellow. Father came in and said, "He's had. He's a, I can't remember the words. I can't repeat them. Got to get rid of that." So I just retired, and I hate to paint. So I hate to paint. My wife says. Fine, you can paint. I hate to paint. So fine, I'll do it for the church. 
I get there and start peeing. The comment is just, hey, you're music. Music director. I said, fine, Father, I'll volunteer again. <laughs> On one condition. I'll do it until you get somebody else. <laughs> that was 11 years ago. So I told him, I said, after today, I'm done. <laughs> now we'd like to show Father, or give Father a picture of our Choir, and I hope he cherishes it. It's hard. We really sang ours this morning, especially. Yeah. I picked the right interim choir director. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's Hear a lot of music. And you've seen us all the time. We've been cantering in the choir and then in our contemporary group. And we had a blast and hopefully plan to resume that again when we get a melody instrument to join us or two. Anyone out there playing piano? Sounds, you know, you know it's lucky. <laughs> um, so we decided to have our pictures we had done two years ago um, set up in a frame. I don't know if you ever knew about the second one. This is the first one. That's in the parish directory, and we've all signed it, of course. Except for our member who we lost, Mr. Wayne. But then we also had a fun one done, because we are divine intervention. So we had to do some intervening. <laughs> this poor lost soul. <laughs> so we hope that you will treasure this and remember our little group and how much music we gave to you and how much we shared that with you. <laughs> Washers play. <laughs> Thanks for the award. <laughs> he has got me hooked on it. I now have an iPad, an iMac, an uh, iPhone. So we know how much you love it. So we have given, we will be happy if you would wear this. It is the brand new I, Apple, or the Apple Watch. Oh. Ed has broken bread, seen many wet, poured water over a baby's head. He's got little hair upon his head, our amazing Father Ed. <laughs> Father Ed was our head, but now he'll tread, cause Pope has said he'll be bishop instead. Our tears will shed as we all dread our goodbye to Father Ed. <laughs> Okay, so everybody could hear that, right? Okay, good. So now let's all sing it to Father, because we love him so much. So much. Alright, everybody ready? One, two, three. He has broken bread, seen many wet, for water over a baby's head. He's a little hair upon his head, our amazing Father Ed. Father Ed was our head, but now he'll tread, as folks have said, we wish him instead. Our tears will shed as we all dread our goodbye to Father Ed.
so um, not only am I going to thank you from Faith Squad, but before I read my script, I want to say I've had six priests throughout my life, and I'm only 15. These by far are the best one I have had. So, I'm so glad. And the best of luck as you lead the Diocese of Greensburg. Um, we're going to miss you a lot. And, um, and therefore, whatever, whatever we wanted to do, you backed us on for the most part. You've attended functions and then a few meetings. And uh, gave us our gave us your house for our Christmas party. And of course, you were there to enjoy it with us. Um, we wanted to give you something that would, would you would remember us, not that you can forget us, but something where you could remember us, as well as something that was functional, useful, practical, elegant, and befitting a bishop. <laughs> we think we came up with the right answer. The box. Attended <laughs> <laughs> so I can read the inscription. To, to our Father and Holy Infant Council of Catholic Women 2015. You've been a lot of things to a lot of people, but you've been especially helpful to the Knights of Columbus as a Sir Knight, as my chaplain for the last year. And we'd like to thank you on behalf of the Knights of Columbus for this annuity, which is an open end annuity for you to take with you. But I am going to read it. It is a beautiful citation from the House of Representatives. And it reads, Whereas the House of Representatives of Pennsylvania is always pleased to recognize those individuals who devote their lives to serving God and humanity, contributing in a meaningful way toward a better and more productive society, and whereas the Reverend Edward C. Malesic is being honored upon his ordination as Bishop of the Diocese of Greensburg, which will take place at the Blessed Sacrament Cathedral on July 13, 2015. And whereas, lauded as the fifth Bishop of the Diocese of Greensburg, Reverend Malesic will represent nearly 150,000 individuals in four counties. Born on August 14, 1960, Reverend Malesic is a graduate of Central Dauphin East High School. He received bachelor's and master's degrees from the Pontifical College Josephinum in Ohio and was ordained a priest in the Diocese of Harrisburg on May 30th, 1987. He was the assistant pastor at St. Teresa's Parish and St. Rose of Lima Parish, and he was also the Catholic campus minister of your college. In 1992, 
he was appointed to full-time campus ministry and served four years at Millersville University and he also served at Franklin and Marshall College during that time. Reverend Malesic received his licentiate in canon law in 1998 and has served the tribunal in numerous capacities including auditor, adjutant, judicial vicar, and secretary of canonical services. And he was appointed judicial vicar in 2006, the position he continues to hold. In addition, Reverend Malesic is pastor of the Holy Infant Parish in York Haven, where he has served since 2004. Now, therefore, the House of Representatives of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania heartily congratulates the Reverend Edward C. Malesic upon this special distinction, offers best wishes for the continuation of his many laudable endeavors, and directs that a copy of this citation, sponsored by the Honorable Keith Gillespie on June 3, 2015, be transmitted to the Reverend Edward C. Malesic. Signed, Keith Gillespie, Mike Tercey, Speaker of the House, and Anthony Frank Barbush, Chief Clerk of the House. In addition to that, he will be also receiving another citation from the Governor's Office at a later time. So anyway, Father Malesic, this is your life. I mean, you like it. Because just their whole life is passing before you. Do you like that? We're just waiting for a secret person to come from behind that tree. Hey, if I knew Father Malesic, why do you still have the seminary? See, you like that. It's going to be coming out any second now, but we're not going to get there. Okay. The next thing is, ooh, you're going to like this. Oh, I'm like to Greg. something. Right? 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 I see. There's a little one. Yes. I have a little one behind me. She's right down here. I see her. And I got a big one over here. I'd like to read it. Oh, this is a cake. Ta da. That says, Father Ed, may God continue to bless you on your journey. Love, Holy Infant Parish. Yeah, I always get the pretty girls. Okay. So, you have the other one, thing, right? And now, the big one. This year, two, two more, two more things. Well, see, it just it goes on and on and on and on and on. Okay, and here he goes. Here's Becky. This is gonna be a biggie. Hey, he's out with the music. It's big. Okay. Okay. Um, when the announcement was made that you were uh, being uh, made Bishop of Greensburg, we only had one week left of religious ed after that, so we really didn't have time to get a youth gift together. So this is a future gift. Well. From two, two representing all the youth of the parish. Now actually, we cannot give you a palm tree, a real palm tree. <laughs> but we do promise that by the time you get to back to dedicate the church next year, that we will have a tree planted in your honor from the youth of the parish. <laughs> this parish has been generous so much, and so it, they always amaze me at their generosity. So over the last few weeks, parishioners have donated toward a parish gift for you. And we are proud to give you a total of $7,740 to be used at your discretion.
Father, uh, I just want to say something to you before you know we continue on in our in our uh, celebration here for you. Uh, I've known you for 28 years. Uh, I've been with you as your deacon at St. Teresa's for two years and then 11 years here at Holy Infant. That's a long, long time. But I have to say, in 32 years of ordained ministry, I have never met a pastor or a priest. as great as he is. And it's our fondest wish, Father, that the Lord will continue to bless you with good health, long life, happiness, joy, and peace as you minister to God's holy people in the Diocese of Greenberg. Greensburg. Thank you so much, Ed. We love you. There's a poem that we believe says everything. It's called That Man is a Success who has lived well, laughed often, and loved much, who has gained the respect of intelligent men and women and the love of children, who has filled his niche and accomplished his task, who leaves the world better than he found it, whether by an improved copy, a perfect poem, or a rescued soul who never lacked appreciation of Earth's beauty or failed to express it, who looks for the best in others and gave the best he had. That's you. There's only one man that we need to hear from, and when I introduce him, I want you to meet this lady right here behind me first. Because <laughs> Betty is right here, and she is just coming at the bank. Get up here and say something about Father Ray. Hey, come on. Thought you had me there for a minute. <laughs> okay, Father. I want to see if I can get through this. I, it, all joking aside, I felt compelled to take a few minutes to voice my feelings of the last 11 years. And it's truly been a joy and an honor to work with you. I know, I don't know where to start, for you do so much for us. You bring joy and laughter with your great sense of humor. You provide an example of how to live our faith. You care for each of us as we struggle through life's hard times. You challenge us to be a beacon of light to our families and community. You shepherd us and always lead us to God and remind us that God is the center of our life. You pray with us and always sing a joyful song. You share so much of who you are and you even shared your own loving family with us over the years. You are generous with your time and talent. You are a friend and pastor. Know that we will, with laughter and joy, continue your good works. We promise to be good examples to others. We will care for each other in good and bad times, strengthening the bonds within this parish family. We will shine our light of faith hope and love to all we meet. We will follow our new shepherd and pastor, Father Wise, with love and faith. We will pray for you always and sing God's praises. We will continue to grow and harvest the seeds that you have planted. We will value the friendship you share with us. 
we will pray for the people of the Diocese of Greensburg whom God has put into your care. But most of all, like your motto says, we will serve the Lord with gladness. You are special and loved. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts and thank you from the bottom of my heart. May God bless you always. future great bishop, a man of God who has touched so many lives and so many hearts in so many beautiful and wonderful ways. May the, may the God whom we all serve keep you safe and in his care today and all the days of your life. We love you. God bless you. What a thrill. Um, you guys, when you do something, really do it so well. And, uh, and you know, my, my dad's here, my, my family, my brother and sister, all my cousin, her boyfriend. Um, and thank you for welcoming them into the family of Holy Infant. Thank you for welcoming me into the family of Holy Infant. As I said in my homily, I know my role was the role of pastor, but I always felt like a parishioner, you know? We all have our different gifts and talents and things that we have to do in the parish, different leadership roles um, from a person who, who sings in the pews or cleans on Wednesday or sings in the choir, makes eggs, um, <laughs> who runs the nights or the CCW or the Social Justice Committee. Um, I just happen to be the person uh, at the top of the, of the parish most of the time unless Becky tried to take over. <laughs> But first and foremost, my joy was to be a parishioner of Holy Infant Parish. And you don't know how many times I have heard, and you don't always get to hear these stories, but people who will be leaving the parish, and they will say, this is the best parish we've ever been in. The warmest, the nicest, the most caring. I, I met someone last night who was saying she came to the parish uh, from somewhere else, and uh, she was with her child, and the people in the pew in front of her turned around and smiled at her. And she said that was the first experience she had in the parish where people actually smiled uh, at, at her and her young child. So keep that going. It is really, really important that we be a very welcoming people, very warm, very open. I love how we, we've taken care of our kids and allowed them to, to be kids and run around. Thank you for letting me be a, a parishioner here. I really do have to thank um, Becky for doing so much behind the scenes for 11 years. I mean, how did I, some people sometimes say, how did you do two jobs, pastor and judicial victory? And uh, there's one word, it's called delegation. <laughs> and here I delegated a lot to Becky and to Deacon Joe and, and Sue and the whole staff that supports this parish. It's, it's such a tremendous, tremendous um, staff that you guys, that we have, 
um, as as holy of fifths. You know, I, I mentioned in the homily so many memories, and that's that's pretty much what I want to say. Is I take each and every one of you, and, and uh, again, one of the hard things about um, leaving is that I know so many of your stories, and I won't always get to know the end of some of those stories that are ongoing. So please keep in touch and, and write, and, and don't be afraid to call uh, the Diocese of Greensburg and ask for Bishop Molesic. It still sounds so odd <laughs> to say that, but um, but that's what it is. Anyway, how many people are here are from the Diocese of Greensburg who are in, par in the parishes, in the parish and, and come from Greensburg? Just stand up for a moment. When you come back home, um, you know, please stop by and, and be seated. I, I want to, I have to, you know, almost every week since this has been announced, um, there's been someone here from Greensburg, so I have to say that today there's someone at our party from Greensburg, and that's Gil and Rachel Perez, who are in the back. Gil and Rachel stand up. They're from my new diocese. Welcome to the parish and welcome to the Holy Infant at its best uh, when we gather together and just um, just enjoy each other's presence. Uh, as you as you heard that that curriculum vitae, the, my life story and all the things I've done, um, as I kind of laugh. In, in 20 years of priesthood, I, I've, I've I've been a lot of places, and each and every one of those places has been a, a thrill for me but none more than, than Holy Infant. This is where I spent 11 years. The only place I spent longer was in Enhot growing up. Um, so this has been home for, for so long. And I always knew the day would come when I'd have to say goodbye. That's kind of the nature of the, the role of a priest. Um, I was hoping it would be three or four or more years from now. But uh, God has other plans and, and I'm, going, I'm going to Greensburg, but, but we definitely will, will keep in touch. Is this the part where the car comes down the road? <laughs> I'm, I'm talking as long as I can, Becky. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the BMW is like, there, I'll just take one. <laughs> Which car do I want? Gil and Rachel, you're getting a very serious bishop. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, I, the priesthood is such a special thing. It's such a special gift. Um, the priesthood for me, first of all, was a call from God. One I didn't want either, nor did I expect. I wanted to work in a biology lab as a medical technology uh, student or uh, person, medical technologist. Um, but the call came, and I said yes to it. And I've had a great experience, and now the call has come to be a bishop, and I've said yes to it. I'm, I'm sure it'll be a great experience, too. And I appreciate you supporting, not just me as an individual, but supporting the priesthood. It's so important in the church these days to support the priests and to support married couples. Another important thing is to support each other in your marriages. Those who are called to the single life, to support those people, too. However God calls us, He calls us, and we're blessed no matter what. God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for being so kind to me, so loving, so generous. Thanks for being who you are so, so well. Thanks for being disciples of Jesus. Thanks for being the Church of Holy Infant. May Almighty God bless all of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thanks to everyone. Can I everyone? Thank everyone who, who really worked hard, I know, to put this tent up. The other tents, thanks for loaning some of these tents to us. Thanks to uh, Greg, he did a great job, and he, he wasn't uh, off color too much. <laughs> one thing. Um, and, uh, and thanks to all the presenters. Thanks for everyone who, who gave me gifts and, and who gave me, who uh, contributed to the gift that I received. Thank you so much, everyone who helped in any way. Have a great day.
Father, you you want to do this? Father, Father Bender, one of our newest priests, who was uh, taught me everything huh. I know about being a pastor. something about Father Ed, yeah. but there's children present. <laughs> I had a great, there was two summers ago and I had a great summer. Uh, it's just like Father Ed said, you're family and you'll always be family and so I will always come back to Holy Infant as much as I can. Just for the future, Father Weiss is an amazing priest and he will love it here because you're amazing people. So thank you. Thank you for Father Ed. Bishop Molesic. Our blessing. Heavenly Father, you are love and goodness. As we lift up our hearts in prayer, we offer you our praise and gratitude for all things especially for the gift of your servant Edward in our lives. With gladness he announced your call to be the successor of the apostles. May he continue to be a loving father devoted to Jesus Christ, who sustains and guides your people on the way of salvation. Abundantly bless his ministry of faith and shower him with the special graces of the Holy Spirit to lead and teach 